Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Sunrise Parabellum Tournament. Today we've got the unification games for Clown Magic vs Mortis Fan Club. Representing Clown Magic as the Orcs, we've got Pax. And representing Mortis Fan Club as the Dark Angels, we've got Custom King. Custom King will be opening up with Triple, Scout Marines, Tech Servitor, a Cloister Barracks as well. Whereas the Orcs are going to go for the True and Blue, a couple of Slugger Boy squads, a Grot squad, as well as a Generator and a Boys Hut. So if you've been following the tournament, We've already seen Clown Magic go head-to-head -head against the might of uh, the Mad Team, of which at the end, what was it? It was 2-1 in the Unification Games and 3-0 to uh, Mad in the Vanilla Games. So at the moment, Mad's got four points and Clown Magic has got two. So plenty of points to still win, plenty of games to still be had. What we'll be doing is that we'll be having the Unification Games on this channel today and then straight after, I'll put a link in the description for Jagus's videos because he will be casting the vanilla games between Clown Magic and Mortis Fan Club. Isn't that exciting? So yeah, anyway, uh, interesting uh, matchup here in the sense that Pax is, as I think I mentioned in the previous game or previous videos that we've done on him, relatively new in the Donor War community, but quickly rising up in the ranks to, he's uh, uh, basically a phenomenal player. I mean, if you watch those games against Magic Number, not Magic Number, Mad Number, uh, he did a really, really good job. So I'm quite excited to see how he's going to go up against uh, Custom King here. Who's, you know, this this guy's been around for, for, for decades. He's been, well, I mean, he's, he's played more Dawn of War than you've had hot dinners, young man. So will age before beauty? Is, is that the phrase? Experience before before raw, youthful energy? We'll, we'll have to see how this goes. Got some Slugger Boys coming up against these Scout Marines. And the Scout Marines are going to be slapping around these guys quite easily. Unless, of course, they go for their combat shotguns. In fact, hold on. There we go, much better. Sorry, I, I, I was playing game the other day, and I've got to turn down the volume so I can plumb in here what people are saying on Discord, but I completely forgot to turn the volume back up. But it's back up now, so we can actually hear the shots. The meaty shots from these uh, Scout Marines. But yeah, once these guys go for their combat shotguns, they should be able to take the Slugger Boys on quite nicely. But Shooter Boy Squad teleporting in, beautiful and pink. Scouts will not be able to stand up against all this, but a chapter master, or company master, sorry, will come in and give these guys a good slap and tickle. Charging in with his his clerks on, little buck on his wasteland line as well. And yeah, he's, he's not messing around, is he? No need for a ranged weapon. He's just double-handing his, his chain sword there. Oh, it's going to jump inside this listening post before jumping back out again. Going to go for a war banner as well for additional lads. But these shoot boys aren't really standing up all that well against the company master. And these guys aren't even, they don't even have any upgrades to their weapons yet. To be fair though, the Dark Angels do have very powerful scout marines in this game. Gotta be very careful with them. Another war banner going on over here. Listening post will be upgraded. Cross gonna charge in like they own the place. Go and get them. Get them with your stabby bits. Doing a nice job of distracting them while the Orcs reposition over yonder. Trying to engage these scouts in glorious hand-to-hand -hand combat, but Shoeboy's moving a little bit too far forward. Getting attacked in the chops by this company master. Big Mech can't even get in at the moment. Not, not an avenue for him to do any bashing. Scout's now going to use this opportunity to capture his critical location in the middle. Orcs going to try and ignore the company master and prevent them from doing anything or everything. And the Dark Angels will fall back ever so slightly. Yeah, at the moment, a bit outmanned and outgunned. They've got a, another scout squad joining him. Big Mac getting involved. As the Shooter Boys try to do a little bit of a stutter step. But being focused down by the Scout Marines. Serious amount of damage that these guys can pull off. The Company Master continually charged. Oh, we've even got a flanking force of scouts over here. But more Slugger Boys as well. Tit for tat in the centre of Fata Morga here. Scout Marine's going to be pushed back home. Got a Plasma Guns toe. That's 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 a beautiful little animation going on there. Very white and shiny. We'll scare away the Slugger Boys, and now the Scouts are able to turn their gunfire on these guys. Looks like it'll be, probably be a squad wipe, all things considered. We do have some Storm Boys. Ah, there we go. Some Storm Boys would be a nice counter too. The Scout Marine's going to jump straight in. Only four models, though. Gonna be very careful with them. 
Oscar can't go too far, otherwise this plasma gun turret will get them. No time at all. Take it down two models, quick as you like. We'll have to retreat in this general direction. Shoot a boy and Big Mech, giving these scouts the run around. What's going on in the bases at the moment? Nothing too crazy. 92 and 20 compared to 92 and 20. Oh, look at that. Exactly the same economy. That's nice. You don't see that often, do you? Yeah, shoot boy's got these guys in the corner. Storm boy's over here. Very unfortunate. Threw a frag bomb in there. Did a fair bit of damage, but not enough to destroy all these guys. Big Mech going to separate from the shooter boys. Going to see if he can do a little bit to help defend them and reduce the amount of incoming damage. Storm boy's also going to do the same. Big Mech giving him the one-two buckle my shoe as he throws him around. But shooter boys have been reduced quite significantly in number. Not quite able to get their big shoes yet, although they have got their pile of guns. I imagine they've got it somewhere. Where's your pile of guns, young man? There it is, just there. So they will certainly need those big shooters if they want to contend with the firepower that the scouts are bringing to bear here. God, the scouts just sound so positive, don't they? They're just positively pleased about being out in the sandy dunes of Fatamorga today. Another war banner coming up will help them at least defend this area. Big Mech not really taking all that much damage from the scouts. Tanking a good bit of damage there. Storm boys. Going to see if they can do some more stuff, but morale still broken. As well as their lives. There we go. Squad wipe right there. And it's not looking all that ideal for the Orcs at the moment. I mean, don't get me wrong. They've, they've they hunkered down. They're under no threat of being destroyed, but... Have you gone? Are you in tier two now? Hold on. Double click. There we go. Ah, oh, you are in tier two. All right, fair enough. Are you going to go for tier two? Not quite yet. They are going for a sacristy chamber. Slugger boys over here, being pressed by the company master. But once this air tower goes up, I imagine there we go. The Daka jets come out. Daka jets are a mean piece of kit. Good against basically everything. Another space marine squad gonna go for some melter guns. Okay, all right. Nice counter to the Dakar Jets if they're able to keep alive. Scott's looking like they were ready to engage in glorious melee combat. Big Mech teleporting away. I have to wait for that Dakar Jet to come out before they're able to contend with all this firepower. Also going to get their Scout Sergeants in there as well. Just for additional Dakar. Over here, what, what's over here? Oh, just more Scouts capturing things. Capturing their bits and bobs. Dakar Jet now online. And this guy is a mean customer. Focusing on that scout. Oh, not, not the scout. Sorry, the, the regular Space Marines. Oh, what is that? It's just a couple of shots and a model's dead. There's a bit of AoE damage as well from the looks of things. Yeah, all the Melter Guns have been taken offline straight away. In the Tug of War campaign. I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. These Dakar Jets really were a pain and a nuisance for the Imperial Guard to deal with. And it does seem like the Dakar Jets will once again shine true and blue in this engagement. Scouts over here. Yeah, they're not they're not feeling all that pretty anymore, are they? Can't tie these guys up in close combat. Don't think there's any close combat. Oh no, there is there's the attack scabs that fly, don't they? But that's the only singular melee orientated aircraft unit in the game, if I'm not mistaken. Sentry person now going to get the full force of the Dakar Jets. Also got a knob squad out for packs. Going to go for any more Dakar Jets? No, you're showing mercy. Only going only gonna to go for one. Oh no, I, I lie. There's two. Ah, oh, now there's two of them. They're multiplying. Got a machine nave coming out and a Mortis Dreadnought. I got a Mortis fan club going for the Mortis Dreadnought. As is true and just. Going to go for an auto cannon. We should help it. A little bit against these Dakar Jets. I haven't got the best kind of health. A lot of tankiest of things. We'll do a bit of a flying pass over these lads. Tank Buster Squad coming out to play as well for the Orcs. And I mean that. That scout domination earlier on worked really well, but... Don't seem to really scale all that well into Tier 2. Orcs have done a lot of capturing. A lot of Dakaring. Scouts over here trying to 
smash up stuff over here, but... I mean, these war banners and the pile of guns being backed up by Ladaka Jet. Unable to really break that line there. Look at him go, that's... Yeah, that's, that's certainly a Mortis... A Mortis engine right there. That Dreadnought certainly lifts at the old gym. So, Mortis, Mortis Dreadnought... In fact, yeah, both of them are going to go for auto cannons, Like, mobile anti-air emplacements. But Daka Jet seems to be taking it quite nicely. Nobs over here, decapping that strategic point. Got some shooter boys now with their big shooters. But need those tank busters to come along. There we go, they're coming around the flanks. Nobs going to teleport straight in. And there we go, full surround on this emplacement. Daka Jet's also coming in from the northern side. Dreadnoughts doing a good job at standing their ground, but against assaults from every which direction, you don't know really where to fire. Doing a little bit of damage to both Daka Jets, but not quite enough to kill either of them. We do have a plasma guns turret on top of this mountain here, as well as some scouts off in the distance fighting these knobs. Do not stand up all that well. Trying to get a regular old Dreadnought out. But don't know if the Dreadnoughts are going to be winning the day today. Mortis Dreadnought still holding on for dear life. But the Orcs are swarming everywhere. We've got a second squad of tank busters coming in. And it doesn't look pretty for the Dark Angels. Can you get anything else out? Is there anything else you can get out that would save you from this situation? If you go for infantry, well, a deck of jets will kill them. If you go for tanks or anything heavier, then the tank buses will get them. So at the moment, it's a lose-lose situation. A Kafka trap of a military kind, if you ask me. Oh, you've got a plasma gun. That's exciting. Wonderful green as well. Which makes sense. If you're Dark Angels, you've got to be green, got to be mean. Tank bus is firing away, and there we go. Mortis fan club losing the first game. All right, then, we'll move on to the next one. Okie dokie, so match number two. Custom King, being the loser of the previous round, was able to select the map, and he's, well, he's, he's chosen out of reaches. Uh, Pax settled with staying with the Orcs, and so as a counterpick, um, Custom King has gone for the Necrons, which is an interesting choice of race and map. I'm not entirely sure if this is an ideal Necron map. Purely because, I mean, what, the Orcs have got access to all these gubbins over here. Uh, Necrons find it a little bit difficult to push out in the earlier games. There's also this ridge, which makes it, early aggression from the Orcs quite an easy thing. So I'm sure that there's, that there's a reason. I'm sure that there's a logic behind this. We're going to see a very aggressive Gorse turret being placed in the center here. Wherever the Slugger boys, I mean, Pax is anticipating this. Going straight for this strategic point in the middle. We'll see this going. Will he be able to stop the Builder Scabs from building up this ghost turret before? Oh, no. You're just going to walk straight on by. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, they said, well, you know what? I don't deal with any of that nonsense. I'm going to carry on walking this way. But to be fair, though, if the Necrons have spent money building up this ghost turret, he now knows that there's probably not going to be a ghost turret in the base or defending any of this other gubbin. So I thought, well, why fight over that? Over that? We're going to just have another one. Or just, just have any of the other strategic points. All right, okay, interesting. Going for triple slugger boys here. Big mech also going to be coming out. It's a standard fare for the orcs. You sometimes see orcs open up double sluggers or triple sluggers. Depends on how often or how many strategic points are up for grabs. Plasma generator being overdriven here. So increasing the Necron economy for a short while at the expense of damaging your plasma generator is quite a risky maneuver, especially on a map as small as this. Well, not small, but there's... You know what I mean? There's there's not much room for the Necrons to play around with. Love repairing that ghost turret. And no man's business. Big Mac will probably want to turn his attention to these guys. And slap them down. Slugger Boy is also going to manoeuvre in. See if they can assist him. Big Mac definitely tanking that damage quite nicely. And yeah, the Bill Scouts will just leave it. 
No clogs are coming over there. Reinforcing their ranks by a couple of numbers. And we'll get a second Necron Warrior squad in the way as well. More Bill Scarves coming in. Going to try and repair this as much as they can. Not quite able to. Ghost to it goes down. Now the Necron Warriors have to deal with Orc combat in the in in the close in the close regions. But no, the Slugger Boys will capture this strategic point instead. Maneuvering around. Got both points over here being captured. Intra uh, you know, I, 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 I understand this now. Yeah, okay, so... I mean, now they've got a listening post here with a gun on top as well. Hemming those Necrons in. Slugger Boy's continuously chasing after these Builder Scarabs. Builder Scarabs need to get out of there. There we go. Run away. Live to fight another day. Necrons trying to shoot these guys down. Getting a bit of damage done. But the big mech... Going to claw his way into their ranks. Bringing down a lot of these boys. Very low health at the moment. But these guys are being reinforced as much as humanly possible. Go and see a third squad of Necron Warriors on the way out. But while all this is going on, the Orcs are just going around capturing all this stuff over here. So, I mean, yeah, okay, they might be spending a bit of material, losing a couple of models here and there. I mean, they've even captured stuff over here. This is a complete and total orc spread across the map. More Necron Warriors on the way. Got some Builder Scarabs as well. But this is now a good amount of Necron Warriors. Quite an intimidating mess, should one say. And they're not too bad in close combat neither. 30 40 damage if you believe the unit card. Also going to go for their Ghost Reapers, which are effectively... Necron shotguns, all intents and purposes. Third squad on the way, got some grots. Moving in for some quick repairs. Orcs losing their morale. And it looks like the Necrons are getting a bit of a foothold in this engagement. Forcing that big mech backwards. And now with those Ghost Reapers out, it'll be a real pain in the backside for them. So now... Custom King has got to regain, or not, not necessarily regain, but deny these strategic points as they've taken hold victory from the strategic point perspective. It is quite a bit of a quite a bit of a situation. It needs to act fast, act with decisiveness and stuff. Necron Lord out to play. No relics for me yet, but the Forbidden Archive is on the way out. I can imagine nothing too unusual for those relics. I, I assume that the Solar Pulse, Phylactery, and the other one, whatever that one's called, I've completely forgot. But you know, you know the standard trio of Necron upgrades for their Lord. Can't imagine them going for anything else in this situation. Or banner being popped down. Are we in tier? No, we're not in tier two yet. Spending all their money on the listening purse that have been pop it, popping up. The Necrons are now decapping everything that they can. Necron Lord over here, slamming down a war banner or two. Necron's going to teleport back home as the shooter boys try and prevent this Bill of Scarab unit from capturing the relic over here. Now we've got another taking old victory countdown going on as these slugger boys down here begin capturing this critical location Bill of was busy in the base pile of guns and my goodness just, just war banners everywhere though the Necron Lord has managed to take out that war banner down over on the northern side a very low on health at the moment doesn't look like he's gone for any of his upgrades as of yet Orc's economy absolutely phenomenal no wonder why they're able to get so many units out this early on in the game. Warriors over yonder using their Ghost Reapers as a Necron Lord goes toe to toe but will be taken down sadly. Big shooters on these lads. Two squads of shooters as well, so six in in the grand scheme of things. Necrons are going to go for their tier two. Five minutes until taken hold. But yeah, they definitely need to start having a look at these blue points. 
where can they really go from this point? I mean, if I mean, they really don't need to take her down one or two more. But if they start attacking up north, you've got the pile of guns, you've got the war banners to deal with. Go down this way, you've got all these shooter boys to have to go up against. The big mech teleport away. Where have you gone? Eyes ah, repositioning over in the heavy cover, also the light cover here. The Necron's undeterred will continue moving forward. Slugger Boy Squad has been taken out in its entirety. Necron's going to move back a little bit. Don't know if they've got any more jumping juice to teleport back home. Some flayed ones would have been a really nice addition to this composition here. Ghost are going to be placed at the back. Yeah, I do not know how these Necron Warriors are going to deal with all this stuff going on. Have you gone into your tier twos yet? Are oh, you just about to pop? And more Necron Warriors. Okay, all right. Are we able to get some Tomb Blades from the... Oh, what do you call it? From the Greater Summoning Court. And Tomb Blades would be great against these Shooter Boys. Just They just need to survive till then. Got Slugger Boy Knob armed with his Power Claw. Managing to survive till the very end there. Great summoning car is being built up. Need to take out this listening purse as well. Young man, Mr. Custom King. Knob Squad. Oh, that's that, sir. Those are foul portents indeed. Knob Squad just walking in like they own the place. Give them a couple of moments. I'm fairly certain that they will. Only one squad of Necron Warriors left to hold down the fort. Custom King is trying to build another one up. But no, Custom King surrenders, and that is... So that's 2-0 to Clown Magic at the moment. So cool, nice one. We'll go to uh, the final game then. All right then, so game three. Custom King being on losing side once again. He has uh, counterpicked Orcs with Necrons again. And he's also picked this map, Shrine of Exelon, which, much like the last uh, game, very interesting choice of counter faction and map. Oh, I mean, Necron's totally fine against the Orcs. I don't see they've got much of a problem against them, but on a map this size, there's not much room that the Orcs have to move down to just come down within slapping range. But then again, I suppose there's not much fancy manoeuvring needed. There's there's one avenue of entry here, one avenue of entry there. If you stick a Gorse turret up, which he's doing right here, that will cover most of what the Orcs can bash, so... I suppose we'll, 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 there, is, there is a logic behind what Custom King is going for. It's going to go straight for those shooter boys rather than the big mech straight away. Only two slugger boys. So that's why he's gone for the shooter boys. Just so he can have that capping unit out. He'll be capturing all these things as quickly as humanly possible. I mean, what? One, two, three, four, five. So, I mean, Orcs with five strategic points from the get-go. That's, that, that's a lot of blue money. That's a lot of blue money. And the Orcs love their blue money. That, that's, that's their primary sustenance. I mean, their war banners don't cost any energy. And a lot of their tier 1 units don't cost any energy neither. So if they could just get that economy ball rolling, they'll be laughing all the way to the finish line here. Going for the standard openings for the Necrons as well. Nothing too crazy at the moment. Are going to see some Necron Warriors go up against these Slugger Boys. Slugger Boys looking to see if they can get those early capping stuff going on, like they did in the previous game. One model goes down, Necron Warrior is going to trundle over. Oh, bloody hell. My camera is well known for its ability to not do what I'm telling it. Oh, two-pronged attack. Shooter Boys going on around this direction, but it will spot the Ghost Turret. Got all the squiggly things going on with these plasma generators should help them increase their economy while they get it all set up. Well, Scott was trying to capture this place. Big Mech teleporting in with some Shooter Boys. Going to focus on these Necron Warriors. And the Slugger's not really going down. Managing to tank a fair bit of damage. Necron Warriors being pushed back. Needs some more lads. And more lads he will get. A second squad of Necron Warriors on the way out. A third squad coming out to play. And the Orcs just unabashedly, unashamedly bringing out the big clown banner, clown magic, shining true and blue. 
over the Necron's natural strategic point. The Necron warriors seem to be stabilising a bit, pushing away these Slugger boys. Sure boys that are causing them a bit of an issue. One squad wipe going on there. The Necron warriors. And these ones coming out of the Necron Mullif are taking a fair bit of time. Going to fall back to the protective firing of the Gorse turret. As only one model... Oh no, never mind that there's, there's two models left, but quite low on health. Need to get an extra one in there. Good stuff. Surviving narrowly. Now we're going to focus on that Gorse turret. Strategic point countdown, four packs. I'm getting deja vu. It feels very similar to the previous game here. Shooter boys ready, willing, and Vince Cable. Maximum size for their squad. No big shooters yet, but it doesn't seem like they need them at the moment. Going to be skirting around this direction, avoiding that ghost turret. Summoning core will be, will be built over on this side. Villa Scabs here, not having the best of times. And what can you do in this situation? Like I say, normally you've got a bit more time to get your units up, but on a small map like this, Norse can just kind of walk in relatively unimpeded. The Necron Warriors were standing up quite well, but once the Shooter Boys got to their maximum number, it was a different story altogether. Bill Scabs trying to repair this, or at least keep this obelisk alive, but I've been taken down. Need those obelisks, or at least as many as you can, to, well, to improve your building speed. Necron Warriors over here, they don't want this critical location being captured. They don't mind the orcs in this base at the moment, because, I mean, realistically, they try and bash any of these plasma generators. We'll take them a bit of time, and also the ghost will be taking them on. Summoning car online. Necron Lord on his way out. War banners. Look, look at that. It's a very aggressive war banners. Pax is feeling very confident here. Necron Warriors. Might need to teleport back in. Not sure how long. There we go. Double teleport in. I've also got the Ghost Reapers as well. Big Mech will teleport away. Two lads. Looking like they weren't going to teleport, but they managed to do so in the end. And actually, triple Necron Warriors with the big guns. Don't know if it's too little too late, but Necron Lord in their ranks to tie up unnecessary Shooter Boy firings. They might be able to claw their way back in this. Rot's coming in trying to build up a listing post, but the Necron Warriors aren't having any of it. Ghost to it going to be slapped down. But double war banners can be quite a difficult nut to crack. But in saying that, that Necron Lord's not messing around. He's getting involved. Slapping people around with his staff of light. Need to make sure that this Shooter Boy squad is offline, though. They are now getting their big shooters, and once those big shooters are online, we'll be able to drop Necron Warriors... Pretty fast, it has to be said. Necron Lord will stay behind, clear up all this gubbins. Necron Warriors will continue their push forward. Shut sure, boys, almost backing themselves into a corner there. Do have a knob squad on the way. Now, don't know if knob squads are what you want in this situation. As the Ghost Reapers will just knock these guys over. Or will they not? Huh, interesting. Okay, so... I assume that because it's they're big. Can't knock a knob down. These two guys have got no more jumping juice left, it seems. But they will send one Necron Warrior squad back. No one attacking him, Dirt. And now the Orcs have their momentum once again after the Necrons push them back just a smidgen. Bill Scabs looking like they were getting involved in something. Necron Lord sacrificing all his health to take all these buildings down. Only for the Grots to come back in and just rebuild stuff. Big Mac going to teleport in with a small amount of shooter boys. You've got four. Where oh, you've got three. Three, three models plus the Big Mac. That's four in total. Right, okay. Okay, Miss Landshark, you understand math. Yeah, just the unending tide of knobs. Double knob squads now, actually. Five and seven. Economy at the moment, 60% and 60 compared to 122 and 30. Certainly the economic advantage in Pax's favour. And 
And the knobs aren't going anywhere. They are just tanky lads. That will happily fight under a gorse turret or two. Allowing the orcs to rebuild their war banners. This one finishing will get them into tier 2 as well. I mean, they were in tier 2 before, which would explain the, the knobs. But the war banners were destroyed. Much to the inconvenience and anger of the orcs. Necron's going to go for some more Necron warriors. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. Like I say, I think a flayed one or two would be really useful in this engagement. Especially against these knobs. Goes to it over here. Going to be stricken down. Knob has been drawn into some sort of killing field. Been surrounded by Necrons. A brand new, fresh squad of Necrons are over onto this side. And even though the knobs don't seem to be able to kill the Necron warriors outright, while they're all manoeuvring around and running away and stuff, shoot boys can. They could just sit on the back lines and just fire away to the heart's content. Necron warriors getting a good backhand. And Mega Armor knobs on the way. Yeah, there's a, much like the previous game, there's not much you can really do. He's not, he's not even in tier 2 at the moment. So, I suppose maybe a Wraith. One singular Wraith to tie up these scouts. Not scouts, sorry, the shooter boys. But your options are limited. One plasma generator is cracked open. Slugger boys over here capturing the natural strategic point of the Necrons. And with more warriors and a Necron Lord to be rebuilt. The window of opportunity is very thin indeed in this matchup. Mega armored knobs trundling in pink as you like. A beautiful shade of Daka right there. And there we go. Custom King is going to surrender. He blows up his own Necron Monolith in surrender. Okay, so that was uh, that was 3-0 to uh, Clown Magic. So now their total number of wins as of this video is 5. So, so yeah, so do with that information what you will. It's Mad, Mad's got 4, Clown Magic's got 5, and everyone else got 0. But like we say, there's plenty more games to play. At the very end of this video... I will leave a link in the description. It might even be on the screen at the moment if I can figure out how to do that, uh, where you can w watch the vanilla games between Mortis Fan Club and Clown Magic over on Jigs Arts channel. So click it, click it now, follow it, or something about the playlist, I'll, I'll do something with that. And yeah, cool. Thank you all for taking part. And again, thank you, Jigs, for doing the wonderful artwork. Uh, I was going to show off the Necrons uh, Mortis banners, but the well, the Necrons don't have any banners, do they? So that was a pain. Uh, anyway, uh, mine's been Miss Landshark. Pleasure's always never chore. I will see you in a bit. Peace.